Jai Guru, everyone. Jai Guru. Jai Guru. Jai Guru. Welcome to Minute 73 of Awake Minute by Minute podcast. Um, I'm happy to be back after a couple of weeks out um, and joining the guys on this minute. It's a, a very nice minute, so we can jump straight in. But before we do, actually, I should say I've been away for a couple of weeks. So, guys, what have I missed? What, well, you were, the, you were, were this close. Highlights? You were this close from being suspended from this podcast. So, thankfully, <laughs> you made it for this. <laughs> or replaced by some of the guests. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had some pretty cool guests. And it was quite cool having two guests and two hosts. That was quite a cool experience. Nice. Listeners, nice. let us know what you think because they're... We're going to adjust the format based on that feedback. So what was the overarching topics of the last couple of minutes? What did I miss in the topics? Jogger memory. I would, I would say it was, it, it went a bit dark after, after Gurji left India. And then they, there was like, basically the time that would come afterwards would be like the Great Depression and the World War II and everything. And they kind of put it into the film. So the last two, three episodes talked a bit about that, but it's um, also the message that Guruji's message had to come at exactly this time because it was so needed. And I think we'll continue with this narrative in this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I saw Russell Simmons. I'm glad I missed that one, actually. Russell Simmons <laughs> was in the last minute. Yeah. Yeah. He's so cool. When I, when I first saw that, uh, that he was there, I thought, who is this guy? I know, I know this guy. And had to look him up. Um, really interesting character, and uh, yeah, had some interesting takes on delusion, right, and uh, and love and God and things like this, right. So yeah, um, anybody who hasn't watched it, uh, well worth a listen, I'm sure. Well, on this minute, if um, anybody is watching along with this minute seventy three, so minute seventy two to seventy three, um, for clarification. Uh, the general topic of this minute is one of reformation um, to reform. So we have appearances from Philip Goldberg, who we know well, um, have had on the show. Do check him out. We did, we did a special with him. Um, what well, feels like a, a while ago, probably a year ago now, I guess, is it? Mm -hmm. he, he, was, he was great to have on. Uh, uh, Ananda Mehotra is on again uh, toward the end of the minute. Uh, and Brother Chidananda. And we're going to go into more detail on Brother Chidananda in this episode. Um, so, yeah, th this episode um, will cover, you know, what's in the minute. But uh, Ch Chidananda will be the main focus um, of the minute. And the topic being of Reformation, it's prevalent throughout the minute. And we see at the very beginning a, a great shot of Yogananda. Uh, and he's staring into the camera. Um, it's a slow-mo of Yogananda. And it's a you know, very short uh, video, video. And we have a voiceover from Phil Goldberg. And he's talking about the change uh, that has to come from inside out uh, in humanity. And then we see a, a we, we, we were followed by a shot of Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King. And Mahatma Gandhi, we've talked about before. We, we know uh, we're big fans, Priyank. <laughs> in particular, big, big fan. Um, we've uh, yeah, talked a, a little bit about him, but we'll go into a little bit more detail as well. Martin Luther King. Um, so Mahatma Gandhi is studying um, or writing on a notepad. Um, and uh, yeah, Martin Luther King is, is there with a suit and tie and he's got his hand raised and he's standing over a, a crowd of thousands of people looking very inspiring um, in Washington, D.C., then we have a voiceover at this time of Yogananda, uh, the voice actor for Yogananda, saying that the man who will reform himself will reform thousands. Um, so yeah, plenty to talk about before we maybe look at the um, next topic, really, of Brother Chidananda and what he says. So this topic of reformation, chaps, it's not not a light one in some ways. Um, you know, what what... What do we think that's sort of stopping us from reforming ourselves in general? If that's a good question to start with. <laughs> it's just an inertia of um, habits, isn't it? Personally, like I'm trying to reform how I um, eat through the day. And mm. so I'm just in this mode of as soon as I get back from home from work, I need to eat something. 
small to keep me going till dinner. And then for some reason, it's harder to do it when I'm eating than when I'm fasting the whole day. When I'm fasting the whole day, then my mind's in that mode and then they don't think of getting food. But yeah. What are, what are you eating? I mean, if it's a donut, I like, you know, something heavy. <laughs> and you guess, you guys guess what this is for, this? Like for, for listeners. Yeah, yeah. Um, roasted with... roasted gram is called chickpeas. Yeah, it's supposed to be good. Oh. Someone who analyzed my back said, oh, you need to have a couple of handfuls of these a day. Some sort of herbal, oh, yeah. rem some sort of herbal remedy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Is that like an Ayurvedic yeah. take? Yeah. Nice. We, we do love that topic. I mean, to be fair, Priyank, I mean, if that is what you need to reform, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, uh, I could list off a few poor things. That I, I, I would but no, but then, that. And then peanuts as well, but then that ruins dinner as well. Cause then you're like, they're yeah. quite filling these chickpeas, right. And peanuts and like, um, you know, oat milk mm -hmm. and things like that. It's uh, filling. And then your dinner's like, you had two, you're having two dinners. <laughs> what, what, what about you, Mike? What's your greatest reformation project? I hope it's, is it, is it less significant or more significant stopping <laughs> to eat chickpeas? I was, I was going to talk about <laughs> it a bit, a bit more general. I feel like when, when they said be the, uh, ch change yourself and you will change thousands, it's in response to people always thinking I need to change the world, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the wrong way to go about it. But when you change yourself, you will automatically change all those other people. There's this um, book that I, I, keep, I keep reading little parts from Only Love by Diamata. And she says, uh, there's like one very, I, I found it hilarious. There was like one section in there where she goes like, I have so many devotees that come up to me and they tell me, you know, Diamata, I feel like I came to this earth with a great mission, with a great thing to do. And then she would usually tell them, yeah, you know what that mission is? It's yourself. You have to reform yourself. That is a big project that you have. And I feel like that's kind of what this um, uh, quote is about, that we go come to Earth, we want to do stuff out here, but we should do stuff in here. Yeah, it's, it's a very good point, isn't it? That, I mean, I have this sort of existential awareness of of a big project that needs to be undertaken and when i was younger i was just i was looking externally i was looking to see okay well what would i do with my life you know, you know career wise or something like this but the, the calling is is that uh, it's internal isn't it it's that that we all probably have on this path with srf we probably all feel that calling every day it's like every waking moment um never never ceasing um but it, it, it is it is interesting. Um, I, I did hear on the Buddhist side, there's a quote to tend to the part of the garden that you can reach. And that really, that, that garden is really close to, that's internal, isn't it? So that's a nice quote there as well. Um, Priyank. Yeah, you must you love that quote. Out? You must love I've that said quote. It a lot. I think you've said it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully I could remember that quote as well. Then. Yeah, um, yeah. In this... <laughs> In this minute, he the, the 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 section with Gandhi has a quote which says, "Be the change you wish to see in the world." And I did a bit of research, and it appears he never actually said those lines. <laughs> he said something different, and then people like paraphrased and made it this. So he what he said was, "We but mirror the world. All the tendencies pr present in our outer world are to be found in the world of our body. If we." could change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change. As a man can change his own nature, so does the attitude of the world change towards him. This mm -hmm. is the divine mystery supreme. A wonderful thing it is and the source of our happiness. We need not wait to see what others do. <laughs> so I remember, I remember during the independence movement, um, they had they had like they, at one point they gained a lot of traction like a lot of traction and the whole of india was like with it um with this non non you know civil disobedience uh thing they were doing and then what happened was like someone broke out some some like they, they killed five officers in a jail and like burnt them alive and then gandhi felt so bad that he thought 
this has to be something I've done personally. The, the, I've done something incorrectly. This is why my followers have done something incorrectly. So with the British at, at its knees, he literally, he said, he, he called off the whole movement. And everyone was like, what? We, you know, we, they literally, you know, we, we're just about, they're just about, they've got no more control over us. He's now, no, I don't want an India that is, gets its independence by violence or immoral means, because if we, once we get independence and then we have to fend for ourselves, is this how we get, how our people are going to deal with authority or things that they disagree with? So like he thought, he thought, and he repented, he repented himself so much. He went on this fast and things like that. And literally the whole of India went back on its um, civil disobedience and fell back in line and the British then regained um, regained their uh, superior wow. position. So it was quite a powerful, um, a powerful thing. Wow, that is, it's, it's immense. And there, there was a quote um, that uh, I, I did read recently when, when looking into this minute, and uh, it was Gandhi saying that he wished to be uh, reborn um, a pariah in the midst of pariahs because thereby I would be able to render them more effective services. And I just thought, like, would, would we be willing to do this? How many people would be willing to do this? Um, it's just such an immense commitment, isn't it? He was committed to the nth degree. Beautiful, really. Would you be willing to do this, Brian? <laughs> Give I, a, I, a, a future. Uh, I think I'd risk taking rebirth unless I was back. able to <laughs> then leave again, such as Guruji, i.e., avatars that come back out of their own volition because they're already free. But you know, I, I can't yes. see myself <laughs> take going, <risk>. coming back, <laughs> coming back. As selfish as that sounds. As yeah. selfish as that sounds. Um, well, what's the what's the what's the name of um, astral planet? Uh, Hiranya Loko. Uh, that you've Hiranya Loko. That's right. That's yeah. That's, uh, yeah. I'd be I'm, selfishly just. I'm going to be at uh, least. Hiranya I'm going to be at least a semi permanent resident there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah hopefully, um, hopefully, see you there. But yeah. <laughs> I, I already did, I did a bit of research as to what Guruji said about this topic in terms of you know reforming yourself and being the change you wish to see in the world and there's a few things that he says and it's in like the section of right attitude and I'll put the link to this in um, on the comments and it goes by his mere presence one who has reformed himself is able to reform thousands though he may not utter a single word like a rose he diffuses his fragrance to all the yogi teaches and serves others in the highest way by his inspiring life examples ever speak louder than words reform mm -hmm. thyself and thou wilt reform thousands so i thought it was a cool cool parallel and i think gandhi would have you know at, at the same time so this was at actually the same time that master would have composed a lot of his um, you know his writing not writing he would have said this in lectures i'm sure um, but he would have no doubt been influenced by some of what Gandhi said and vice versa. So, was, you know, of, of all the um, <laughs> truth out there, I suppose this was a prevalent truth that people were mm. connecting to. And um, in more recent, like, pop culture, like Michael Jackson's uh, song, Man in the Mirror, if you, if you literally hear the song, the lyrics to that, it's a, quite a deep one, um, and people seem to connect quite emotionally to that song and the words are literally messages that have you know been taken taken from from gandhi and and kuruji yeah mike and by calling men in the mirror more recent pop culture you show your age <laughs> <laughs> especially <laughs> Before my time, actually, that was, but I, I meant more recent with respect to Gandhi and Yogananda. <laughs> if I ask my students, do you know the song Man in the Mirror? They will have no idea, probably. No I, way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to live in that world. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel um, Gandhi was such a great political leader, but 
was he in any way also a spiritual leader to some people? Priyan, do you do you know anything about this? Did any people did anyone find him as an inspiration for their spiritual life? Well, people thought, I believe people thought, especially the political and the powerful class thought he was pretty crap at politics. <laughs> Mm-hmm. but he was he definitely very very good yeah he was a very very good spiritual leader because he could incite this emotional response um and this like obedience that you know gurus gurus would struggle to get from their disciples and he would he was mm-hmm. he was able to do that and and he, he broke barriers of religion uh religious mm-hmm. divide so in his ashram he would have muslims and christians and and that that kind of message would go out to all the other communities in india so it was like this cohesive force when the british were trying to incite communal violence um, a, a classic example of that is uh, the you know gandhi created the national congress on you know on grounds of uh, no religion like it's not really any religion centric um and obviously, we know National Congress today is of a similar, has, has carried that forward. But the British knew that that was such a powerful concept um, in a country such as India that they said, oh, no, this, they, they literally, they, they went to the Muslim, um, the powerful Muslim people like, like Muhammad Ali Jinnah and said, this is a Hindu look that's being run by Nehru and Gandhi and Patel. And these are Hindu, prominent Hindus. So there's a Hindu party. You, you're going to want to create a Muslim party. And then hence the Muslim League was created. And then Pakistan, the East and West Pakistan happened at the insight, inciting of, uh, of that kind of brand of divide and conquer politics that the, the British played on India. So there's a difference between how Gandhi used to influence politics through his spiritual means versus how conventional politicians do it, which is literally <laughs> divide and conquer and, you know, playing on the, playing on the whole minorities card as much as as much mm. as they do the identity politics yeah. mm. um, didn't he have um in his ashram uh you know rules to live by in terms of food and devotion devotional practice sp- basically spiritual practice we covered it in the uh in, in the last the uh, last time we talked about mahatma gandhi um and his when when yogananda uh introduced them to Kriya Yoga and the energization exercises, he was saying that they all, you know, everybody there mm. was, you know, beaming with uh, energy um, in all their body parts. So I, I suppose it depends how you define spiritual leader because it, he is effectively was, you know, social reformist, but spiritual leader in that, in that sense, um, 100% my eyes. Um, but we could talk about reformation all day. And, you know, we have... Uh, other topics uh, in this minute to go into and maybe if any listeners want to share some of the moments where they maybe reformed themselves and it's impacted others that might be interesting to kind of share and understand a little bit more um my my two two cents on that is i went vegetarian you know with the yoga um change of yoga in my life um and my parents family friends if now they are now eat less meat and it, they're always asking about meditation, these kind of things. So I see a very small impact around my network, um, which is positive. But maybe people have some real cool stories that they want to share um, with us. And obviously, guys, jump in if you guys if you guys both want to share anything. Yeah, uh, yoga, 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 and the simple way of life that you know is part of it is certainly a good influence on most people especially in england and and i'm sure in america as well Mm. where people add so much flavor and complexity to their life and go away from what it is they actually need and then they you know they rely on these all these external things so yeah when they see people often ask me at work especially what what do you do for fun i'm like what do you do for fun and then and then they say oh i go you know i do a podcast (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i don't go to that extent <laughs> not sure i'm ready for everyone in my office to know about, to know, this, yeah. <laughs> to know about this podcast selectively uh, yeah. 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 but no they they're so they're so shocked when i tell them you know not only that do i not drink but i don't 
spend my yeah. Friday nights and Saturday nights out in the pub or with my friends, you know, mm-hmm. uh, going out in the city. But I do all these other things and I find fulfillment, probably more fulfillment than they, than they are in, 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 their, in their individual walks mm-hmm. and grosser, grosser walks, shall we say. Um, obviously, that's not everyone, but that does influence them. And that sometimes it's subtle in that then they will then say, then like my, my, my colleague, um, this lady, she, she would say, oh, no, you're, you know, you're right. I'm going to, I'm going to try that. And then she would, she would try it. And now she's been doing various, you know, yoga and meditation things. And then she's like being re- less reliant on, on her friends to, to like take her out and things like that. So things that I do sometimes has a really good influence on, on people. And it's quite, it's quite rewarding mm-hmm. when, when that happens, especially when you haven't really like, you know, shouted the trumpet and to mm-hmm. like, you know, make people change. Yeah, it's definitely the strongest way is the magnetism mm. to draw people in, right? Um, you start running your mouth too much, you probably <laughs> push yeah. people away. I, um, I used to do that when I was in university, but that did not work. Activist, activist, <laughs> uh, Priyanka. Yeah. They used to call me an eco. They used to call me an eco warrior because I used to wear a bandana. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> and I had long hair. So I had very long hair. <laughs> I uh, would love, let's get a picture of that for next time. <laughs> um, good stuff. Uh, so moving on, um, we see a great still image of Yogananda and it sort of slowly zooms in on, on Yogananda. I think it, it looks quite young in that picture. I don't know what you guys thought, um, but he's there dressed in Western clothes, a you know, very long coat, um, standing you know, on what looks like a, a beach with palm trees. So I was immediately curious as to where this photo was taken any ideas do we know can we throw this to the listeners mm. no shakes of heads no. might be might be mexico because it would fit in with those mm. pictures yeah I was, I was gonna say that yeah could be um so yeah that lo- looks looks like, like a nice picture and for context brother chitananda is talking in the background uh, in the voiceover saying that yogananda saw that the message of, of yoga and experiencing spirit um, uh, was was necessary for the world to survive the atomic age. Uh, so he's uh, making an appearance, Brother Chidananda, and we can talk about him. It's a nice opportunity to, to talk about him a bit more. Um, so he's, he's effectively reiterating what Yogananda was um uh, given a warning about so let, let's talk about that first and then we can maybe go into you know more more on Chidananda himself um mike do you, do you want to read the yoga yogananda quote from the autobiography of a yogi uh, that's on the card if you have that open the western day is indeed nearing when the inner science of self-control will be found as necessary as the outer conquest of nature this new atomic age will see man's minds sobered and broadened by the now scientifically indisputable truth that matter is in reality a concentrate of energy. Finer forces of the human mind can and must liberate energies greater than those within stones and metals. Lest the material atomic giant newly unleashed turn on the world in mindless destruction. We had talked about this before, right? So we covered this in mm. kind of recent minutes um, about the atomic age, World War II, uh, the atomic bomb, so on and so forth. So we'll not go into in too much detail here, but if you don't want to listen to it, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is it around minute um, 60 uh, or so? Uh, guys, help me out here. I'm not, not entirely sure when that is. I'm not prepared to t- talk about that too much detail i think it's um 64 there um, 69 roughly. i would say 69 yeah 69 okay yeah. Mm-hmm. okay maybe yes okay thank you um so we talked about it there so we'll not go into too much detail um but in general this is a stark warning um that yes we need to look internally to the wisdom of yoga uh, and of god uh, and that will save our souls from annihilation from the uh, misuse of the atomic power. Um, but there's very interesting parts in Chidananda 
online. Um, in general, he does talk uh, a lot about various topics um, as president of the SRF, the fifth president of the SRF. I did find a, a, a nice little story I'll, I'll just share of when he was a young man and some 40 plus years ago, soon after stepping onto the spiritual path guided by Yogananda, the young man who would become Brother Chidananda was attending an SRF service and the organization's president at that time, a, uh, Sri Dayamata, walked in and gave a talk. Her presence was such a tidal wave of love and joy that the future Chidananda said to himself, if practicing these teachings can give me one fraction of the love and joy that radiates from her, then it's worth any amount of time, any amount of effort. And that is just a great quote. Um, it, yeah, uh, inspires me just uh, just reading it. Um, Priyank, what's your take on that? Interestingly, I was going to use two words to describe my first experience when he when I met him, and that was literally those, the joy that he was, the, the smile and the radiance, the joy was just phenomenal. And then, and then that hits you and then there's that underlying feeling of love that you get. It was, it was just such a beautiful experience. And it happened at the London Centre shortly after he became the president. And he was, he was going to India and he stopped in London for for just a couple of days, and we had we were fortunate to have a satsang satsang with him and a meditation, and everyone was obviously very excited that he was coming, and we'd we'd when he was coming into the centre, we all of us were waiting like lined up in the corridor, pretty much of the London Centre, and we, I was I was holding one of the, the one of the big doors open for him, and um, one of the other young adults um, was holding the other door up. And we both like um, he came in and he was you know pranaming each of us, each one of us, and it was such a tidal wave of just immense love and joy. It was just beautiful. It remains etched in my memory. Mm. Yeah, I, I was there too. Um, I think I may have been on the on the doors welcoming no, people no. in. It was my twin that was on the other was door. Your twin? Yeah. Was it? <laughs> Priyanka. I think, uh, uh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. But I, well, not at the front doors, but uh, on the on the day, I think at the inside. yeah, you were inside door. I was I, inside I, doors, yeah. yeah. It was great. I mean, that was such a such a great day. Yeah, uh, Mike. Yeah, I've comment. hardly ever seen the London Centre as full as on that day. Mm. Yeah, that was, and I don't think they gave us much notice either. Right? Mm. And no. everyone, <laughs> everyone came. Yeah. I think. That's like a, such a good um, example for re reform yourself, reform thousands, like Diamata, but like that, how Diamata reformed herself and it influenced Chidananda instantly just by feeling the love vibration that he felt from her. Yeah. Yeah, I got that interesting. I got this similar feeling when I met um, Mila Lini Mata. No, I didn't meet her, but when I heard her talk, one of the last talks she gave at convocation in 2013 or 14 it was and she was what happened yeah it was I, I think I related this but she just she was just over a rapture so over raptured with with love for everyone that was there and for Guruji that she just kept talking <laughs> and she had yeah. to she had to be like ushered off the stage and she kept going even to the very last moment until she was behind the curtain <laughs> but she was just such a beautiful such a beautiful experience everyone's like there was so much heartfelt um love that everyone was experiencing and everyone was like smiling the widest possible smile that everyone could have it was just beautiful to be part of and mm -hmm. that was a similar interestingly a similar experience to when brother Chidananda was there and you know people say oh I, it would have been lovely to know a direct disciple of which there's probably very few around uh, direct disciple of Guruji such as Mrinalini Mata was but you know he's he said in the past um, that I know he, he says he says I know all those that will come right and all, all know I know all those that will lead this organization and Brother Chidananda mm -hmm. is obviously no ordinary devotee, shall we say? And it, it personally, it felt to me like he was a direct disciple, and he knew Guruji so well. So, mm -hmm. for all those that um, 
you know, are uh, uh, considering that it's not, um, it's just disadvantageous just because there's no direct disciples in the monastic order around that. I don't think that you should feel that way because the, the feeling and the energy, that's not, that's not the case in my experience at all. I think in his um, speech that he gave, um, or he, he wrote about it when he accepted the um, position as president, he directly said that he was going to, um, uh, he, he was just a channel for Yogananda. You know, he, he essentially just forfeited his position, you know, and, and said that simply that it was going to be Yogananda as the head. He was always going to be the head of the organization. He was just going to, um, you know, speak, uh, uh, speak, speak uh, for, for Yogananda in that sense. So he took out his ego completely, uh, which is a real yeah, beautiful beautiful thing. Mike, I know uh, you will have to jump off very shortly. Um, you have a video that you would like to share on Chidananda. Do you want to do that now? Yeah, since we're talking about the man, let's listen to him. Um, it's a story from a talk where he illustrates how our soul escapes from the body through the spine. Um, good topic. Nice. Let's go. Paramahansa Ji said, Kriya is a very ancient science. This is one of the high yoga sciences from the higher ages in India. And as we know, many times great truths, great concepts from the higher ages are handed down through myths and stories. And I want to share one. This is one that Brother Anandamoy pointed out to us when he was talking with the monks. And it's the story of the Greek hero Theseus. This is the story of his encounter in the labyrinth, that maze-like prison in Crete. It was, it was made by King Minos in Crete, and the whole purpose of it was to house this half-man, half-bull monster, the Minotaur. And they said it was such an intricate maze, such, a, such a, an effective prison, that the man who built it, after he built it, he almost couldn't even get out. So... This is, this is how effective it was. So now King Minos had conquered Athens, and as a result of that, he had decreed that every year, seven each of the, the finest young men and young women of Athens needed to be sacrificed to this minotaur, to this monster. Well, Theseus at one point said, okay, I'm going to put a stop to this, and he resolved to confront the monster. So he, he sailed to Crete. He got there, and first thing that happened was the daughter of King Minos, whose name was Ariadne, she was known as the mistress of the labyrinth. Well, right away she fell in love with Theseus. And so to give him a break, to give him a, a chance of surviving, she gave him this big ball of thread. And what did he do? He tied one end of the thread to the door and then made his way down into the into the depths of the labyrinth, unrolling the thread the whole way, and got down to the bottom where he confronted the Minotaur, overcame him, and now what? How, do I, how does he get out? Well, simple. He just followed the thread all the way through the winding passages, way back out to the door and to freedom. And everyone was amazed. You know, how did he get out? Well, it's the same with us. Same with us. That goddess of Maya sent us down into this labyrinth of the body of earthly life, this labyrinth which is just as complex or more complex than any physical maze with the branching and twisting pathways of our proliferating desires. Let's go this way, let's go that way, and how are we going to get out? Well, fortunately, Divine Mother also loves us. And when these bodies are created, she put that thread, she put that thread into the thread-like astral spine, which we call the Sushumna. And all we have to do is find our way and follow that thread out to the door of the spiritual eye and out to freedom. Paramahansuji said, this is what... <coughs> Nice. So, is that uh, is that what we're trying to do? Get away 
fight fight the fight the monster and get get away out, out through, through through the spinal center. It's good good analogy. The monster is unfortunately yourself. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> the man in the mirror. Yeah. 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 And your desires. Yeah. Mm. That need to be overcome. Mm. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I know I know Mike, you have to you have to go. Um you have uh business to attend to. So Chagardu, thank you for joining. Thank you. Priyank and I will soldier on. Soldiering on. Um, then there was two. Then there were two. This is probably one of the rare times that actually we do the the podcast with two people. Mm. Um, Soon there'll be just one. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that'd be a sad Let's day. Hope Let's hope not. We'll have plenty <laughs> of guests uh, to to come back on. Um, let's um, let's share a little bit about his history, shall we? Because uh, maybe not everybody listening uh, will know, and I didn't know actually some of the, some of this um, before I read it. Um, but uh, yeah, Chidananda. He was originally born. Chris was his name, a great, great first name, mm-hmm. um, in 1953. And he was the son of Admiral David Bagley, former commander in chief of the US Naval Forces in Europe. I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. And his contact uh, with the teachings of uh, Armand Yogananda came in the early 1970s in in Sinatus. And Sinatus. I knew I was going to say it wrong. Um, there's no I'm, I'm asking, I know, there was <laughs> in Sinatus. Um, yeah, so he, I came across a copy of the autobiography of Yogi and went into Sinatus and uh, was immediately, uh, as I shared the story earlier on, um, uh, yeah, uh, he knew that he was going to follow this path. Uh, immediately so he applied to enter the uh the monks prostulant ashram uh, mm-hmm. of the srf in 1977 uh, and then uh yeah he, he had the guidance of brother uh, uh Prabhamoy, which would have been amazing for him he trained the young uh, young monks at the time and he uh brother Prabhamoy was actually the one to suggest to sri miralini mata that she considered taking uh, this young monk to uh, into the SRF editorial department. And then it was in 1979, just two years later, uh, when he completed the training that he was transferred to the SRF headquarters in Washington and was in uh, Mount Washington, sorry, and was immediately assigned to the editorial work in the publications department serving under Miralini Mata herself and her co-editor-in-chief Sahaja Mata. So that's a very quick turnaround, turnaround isn't it? Um, you know, he, he entered uh, into the SRF uh, teachings, I think it was 1975 or around about there. Um, he would have been in his 20s, early early 20s, if not just 20, uh, 21 or so. I mean, he's and, been... And then, He's been with like being a monk almost for 50 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a, a significant amount of time in, in one uh, short human lifespan. Mm. Um, and he's, he was immediately recognized um, to sort of take on more responsibility. Um, so he was clearly somebody who was of high value and he probably put himself forward to try to take, take as much responsibilities mm. as uh, he can do. Um, but uh, what I thought was interesting as well was this, he was the son of a former, former uh, Naval Force Commander in Chief of the US. Could you imagine, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall to understand the conversations that would have went on. Sorry, Dad, I, you know, I don't want to join your footsteps in the Navy or <laughs> in the military. I want to be a monk. Uh, how do you think that would have went? Not well. The conversation. <laughs> not well. <laughs> or, or well. I never know, no, actually. Never, never know, know, do you? Yeah. You never know. But you can imagine not well. <laughs> it doesn't go well. <laughs> it doesn't go well with Indian households, yeah. let alone... <laughs> uh, US... U.S. Chief. Marine, yeah, chief of some sort of chief, and um, yeah, yeah, he he's he. I think part of the reason why he must be such a good speaker is because he helped Diamata and Minalini Mata with the publication council, mm-hmm. and so he was, he obviously was would have worked with them um, to work, you know, for for the volumes such as God Talks with Arjuna and the Second Coming of Christ. So mm-hmm. that would have been some pretty good training for what was to come. At the time, obviously, he would not have known it. But 
you know he, he just brings out all these lovely stories that no doubt master would have used and that are in these two volumes and they've, they're probably available to him at any time mm -hmm. yeah yeah he was definitely <clears throat> in the right circles for sure um he, he had some guidance there there is some stories i can actually just go go on here prank um on the on the card but 1996 he was appointed by the uh, president Sri Daimata to um onto the international publications uh, council so he served there until um Sri Daimataji's passing 2010 um I, it was actually Sri Daimata that expressed her conviction to Miralini Mata that brother Chinanda should succeed Miralini Mata as president um and that was um uh, confirmed by uh Daimata uh, just before her passing, 2017. Um, so that, that was all, it was all very much, um, uh, let's say, premonitions, you know, people were saying, okay, well, this is, this is the person um, to, to succeed in various roles. Um, so he was elevated quite, uh, quite speedily, even though he's obviously been a monk for all these years. Um, he's been, he's been one on the lips of many um, to, to succeed. So somebody really of uh, high stature um, throughout his tenure as a, as a monk until he just granted the, the position as president of the SRF and YSS. So really, really interesting there. But in, in general, Prank, I don't, don't know about you, but I didn't see a lot on his kind of life in general. I know he's just so involved with SRF, um, but there's not a lot out there. That's a common theme, I think, for all the, most of the monks. They try and even though they may be quite prominent people from wherever they've come from, we don't actually hear much about their lives. I suppose that's probably to to stop people from going down the alley of like putting any divinity or worshiping them as a guru, as opposed to what we what we know, which is you know our guru lineage officially ends with Yogananda. Um, mm -hmm. But many other organisations obviously carried on, and SRF has to be very careful, and it is very careful to not allow people's hearts to go in the direction of Brother Chidananda is my guru, which mm. is an interesting paradigm because, you know, he, Yogananda said, you know, he, know, he knows all those that are going to come and succeed this organisation. And so he would have picked uh, elevated beings such as Dhammata and Minalini Mata, no doubt Brother Chidananda. So they may be worthy of a status of a guru, but certainly not in the way um, this organization and Guruji is set up for us in our, in our practices. You know, Guruji is the last in the line of our gurus. Yeah, and Chidananda, he makes it quite plain, doesn't he, that he, as I said before, he's, you know, speaking, um, he's promoting Yogananda's uh, teachings. That's really what he's he's there to do. So he certainly does uh, does his best to, dispel any desires from people if they do have have or um uh, inclined to think that way that he may be a, their guru or so on and so forth he's extremely noble and non-egotistical about that um mm. from what i see he's, he's got so many great videos on youtube um I, i've we, we can share actually a couple can't we on the um, yeah on the comments links, yeah. we'll do the that. comments yeah um, yep. for anybody which, who does which want is, to catch a few. Which is interesting because, interesting you should say that, 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 that so many videos are now available of Brother Chidananda and the others because he really heralded the digital age for mm. self-realization fellowship because we, we really li did live in the dark ages for a very long time in terms of our media and publications because we used to, there was virtually nothing on our YouTube channel. Everything was on DVDs or tapes. <laughs> I'm sure people have still got those. Um, and lessons were all paper copies and meditations were all in person. And all of that, I mean, how quickly has Self-Realization Fellowship reacted to this whole COVID, worldwide COVID, and really taken it to propel the organization forward? So now, mm -hmm. you know, we've got such fantastic material online and digital form and you know, all these lovely ways of volunteering now online um, mm -hmm. and these separate organizations that are, you know, 
the lay disciple organization and the yuban and the seva and that are set up to enable us to do that because before it was you know if you weren't near a center then your volunteering capabilities were very restricted and that is yeah. not the case now and and meditation similarly if you weren't with traditionally if you weren't in a big city a big community or just by chance happened to be with a community where there was you know mem- members of the self realization fellowship or guruji that followers then you would be meditating alone but no matter pretty much where you are in the world now as long as you've got a decent internet connection you can meditate with hundreds if not thousands of people as was the case totally. during convocation so these are some pretty huge changes for um really on a world scale quite a small organization and a small following such mm-hmm. as ours compared to you know big catholic churches and other hindu organizations mm-hmm. like the iskon and things like that so these are for a small organization such as ours um it is pretty monumental and the fact that you go to any online meditation now and you'll there'll always be some one there and there's you know there's three we, london center alone does separate ones uh, our, our followers we do separate ones we have slightly longer periods of meditations we do longer like to to a day and we've got this whole rota and we pick our own readers and you know our own uh, ushers and all the same stuff that um, the online meditation center does but it's actually separate we've got our own community that does that and they also we also go to the online meditation center and so like and how mu- how much of that will exist around the world it'll be you know numerous and probably people won't have known about this london center thing but mm-hmm. it's it's fantastic yeah. I mean, I um, yeah. What what I find impressive, um, and there'll be whole teams working on this, is the quality of the editing, even on the uh, what, what's available on the the, the material mm-hmm. that uh, Chidananda's got. They've edited it in a way that's consumable, so it's not just okay. Well, he, you know, he talks for two hours. Let's you know, put, put everything up there or one hour. Um, there's snippets of t- you know certain topics covered. So I, I saw a few that overcoming soul fog, overcoming negativity in today's world. Mm. You know, they make it digestible and relevant, practical for people to absorb. So um, we can share a few of these videos and maybe the get you know the people listening watching you know you guys have some of your uh, preferred uh material on chidananda we can you know share and celebrate celebrate this moment uh for brother chidananda uh do put in your comments on the, into the comment section you know a link to to youtube videos or whatever um uh blogs that he does you know, the materials that he covers uh, and we can we can share some of those together as well and any anything else to add on Brother Chidananda, or shall we move on to the next subject? No, yeah, we can move on. Lovely. To round off the minute, we have uh, somebody who we've talked about before, uh, Ananda uh, Mehotra, and he is uh, seen there uh, looking very well, and he's talking about the... Um, uh, yeah, the foundation SRF um, being bringing current teachings into the world, uh, trying to uh, really transform um, on a collective level the world, not just in the forest. So yeah, he has a quite a cool take on this. He says that the, the forest is here and now. This is bigger and is ever increasing. If we don't practice the teachings here, we will. There will be no forest left at all. Um, so, Priyank, what, what do you think he means by by this? <laughs> the concrete this jungle of the urban jungle, I think he's talking about, of civilization, because as, uh, you know, as we know from Babaji, he was, this dispensation was given so that people wouldn't have to go to some you know, monastery in some remote part of Tibet or in some Himalayan cove to, uh, to find these teachings and to dedicate your life to the practice of yoga but mm-hmm. it's available now for all of us as i said through now especially through you know the online meditation center and digital lessons and you know as as even the lessons um someone someone was telling me that they've got this they've got this support system where people that are 
are blind they obviously won't be able to read the lessons but this didn't exist before they've got this support system where you, the lessons are read to you and you engage in this dialogue with this person and i'm sure then you can ask to be you know repeat repeat things and you build this connection that wouldn't have been there before so yeah so it's about changing mm. that and anand mahotra is but you know changing the way that we interact with these teachings and making them current and making them available for not just the jungle inhabitants but this um, urban urban jungle inhabitants such as us um, and how thankful are we for that opportunity i certainly am but i i thought it was quite interesting that he um he talked about forest and then in the end he said there'll be no there'll be, if we don't do that there was essentially there'll be no forest at all so he goes like a full 180 with his um, metaphor of this yeah, yeah the met forest and then comes back and he kind of says if we don't do this practice he's basically saying essentially that will kill each other and the forest you know we know well well if we kill each other, then I'm sure the wildlife will flourish. <laughs> Sadhguru has said this. Yeah. Like if, if, um, if like there's no humans left, then this planet will be buzzing <laughs> with life and activity. Just not the yeah. type, not just not the type that we wanted in our selfish human <laughs> realm. But I thought I thought I was wondering about that because how much emphasis um, in our sadhana do we put on, you know, eco eco issues um i know chris you have a whole eco village but i've got this um i've got this friend um who who is as passionate if not more passionate about the environment and you know the world the green world more pretty probably more so than god and her practices and i was thinking about that because on one hand she's it's beautiful that she's so passionate about something that really isn't about her it's about it's a selfless thing so no doubt it'll be helping her pushing her forward to that ultimate goal which is obviously god realization and she's using whichever means she has the most passion in to to, to reach that goal but we obviously know that the the best and the ultimate way to reach that goal is through the practices of Kriya. Mm. Um, so where does, uh, is this, I don't know if there's a hospital pass question, Chris, where does that side of it sit with you? So this whole element of, you know, not even just environment, just progress in the mm. world compared yeah. to selfish, as it were, progress for yourself. It's, but eco, eco issues is a classic sure. one, isn't it? Because going to work and, you know, being a good influence in society is obviously good. Um, and you want to try and be the best person you can be for that. But these, this environmental spin, it actually requires you to, like, go in that direction. Because, for example, mm -hmm. so if mm -hmm. I personally, I'm an engineer. I work for, for, for London Underground and I've got a very specific job, which is about trains. But if mm -hmm. I really cared about the environment, then I'd change my career. I'd spin it around and I'd go in that direction. I'd... You know, I'd yeah. be much less about earning money. I'd be much less about more impactful, um, impactful roles mm -hmm. in the world for, for the environment. I, I studied environmental management and economics at uni. I thought I was going to go into a career where I would do environmental management roles. And I did for a very short time. Um, I became very disillusioned with what it actually meant when it brass tacks, you know, what companies and people really interested in um so i've went on the private route where i have my own eco village now but i switched roles into recruitment and i, I was chasing money for a while and that and that was misery <laughs> producing <laughs> <laughs> um to be honest but um you know you, you can find different routes i suppose in in general um is my experience my personal experience in that side of things but um my my take on it is that if for, for self-enlightenment purposes. Um, I've heard, again, I refer to some Buddhist kind of philosophy where, you know, you, they, they um, I think when scrubbing the dishes, you know, they say you can become enlightened through the most menial of ta tasks um, if your mind is solely devoted on, on that. Um, and God being in everything, if you're dedicated, you know, with such ferocity and intensity on the betterment, of nature in this case, then that is 
a part of God. So um, I suppose it depends on what intensity you're doing it with. Uh, will will then depend on you know the selfish you know self realization kind of the, the most important selfishness that you could have um, in that in that sense. Um, but in terms of beneficial for the world, you know, if you can reform yourself by doing that method, then who's to say what's what's actually beneficial? You know, you can impact thousands of people. Look at um, uh, Sir David Attenborough. You know, he's a great example of that, isn't he? He's dedicated his whole life with such intensity and passion and love. And interestingly, in his more recent um, documentary, he said uh, the best way to sort of save the planet that we can all do today is eat less meat, go vegetarian, you know, for a day or two a week or something like that, which was really cool to see, I have to say. That was really cool. So they're kind of inextricably linked, I think, the two subjects. And yeah, sure, you can say Kriya Yoga is superior, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, David Attenborough. David Attenborough is a good example, and I might say a case in point. Now, I don't know what sadhana he practices at home, but let's hmm. say he doesn't practice any sadhana. We don't know anything about his spiritual life, obviously. So this is a conversation in jest. But he's dedicated his hmm. life pretty much to this endeavor, and you'd say he's been very yeah. successful in this, uh, you know, uh, in influencing the world and humanity into this in, this grand. Hmm grand goal of you know environment raising environmental consciousness and but has he neglected what if he neglects entirely his inner work in the pursuit for the outer work uh, yeah I, I honestly think that i i this is a you know i want to say stab in the dark shot in the dark but they're both pretty aggressive <laughs> the english language is just rooted in aggression um he's kind of falling on his own sword in a way he's kind of taking one for the team isn't he he's trying to raise our awareness <laughs> you know, in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a very broad and slow and gradual sense but he's doing a great service for humanity and so it must be such good karma whatever whatever way you cut it you know um uh yeah i, I would say it's fantastic um for him whether you're doing a small amount for many people or a lot for yourself there's got to be some kind of balance there where he's probably accruing some great karma he'll be he'll very be very diplomatic very diplomatic answer Chris. <laughs> Why, what um, would you say <laughs> i'm going to be i'm going to be un undiplomatic <laughs> undiplomatic and um <laughs> completely unqualified to say what i'm going to say but i think the inner work is the most important and obviously it's no doubt important you know all these environmental issues and animal welfare and all these mm -hmm. really depressing things that are around right now mm. i think i think um working on yourself is more important than all of those it sounds really selfish <laughs> but this is I, I i say i say this to people my my loved ones like it's selfish with a capital S. Like uh, it's the highest self to be, you know, selfish is a word that has uh, very bad connotations. But in this sense, we're talking about the self, which is all cells. Like it's, every, it's everything, isn't it? So I agree with you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's interesting that I would say these or feel this, considering I spent all my holidays this year doing this Save Soil campaign with Sadhguru. <laughs> with no for Sadhguru. You've got to so have the balance, though. Going all around Europe, like, campaigning for all this stuff. But really, uh, if I was missing my meditations during... Because it was chaos. Mm. We were going from one city to another in every single day. And um, check it out, savesoil.org. And... And I was thinking, I'm, I'm just I'm missing. My, I just missed my meditation. Well, it was it was mm. 20 minutes when usually I spend 90 minutes. Like, what what am I doing here? Like this 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 yeah. you know, Guruji has told me the most effective means to to get there. And I'm gallivanting around Europe, yeah. <laughs> trying to change trying to change European <laughs> policy on soil, planting trees, and, yeah, planting yeah. trees and soil, you know, soil degradation and extinction of soil, but. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. about that on my um, on my extensive road trip. <laughs> yeah, it's it's something it's something to ponder, but it's each to their own, isn't it? Um, and you know, we're one human family. 
and Gandhi himself said that you know if, if he were to be reborn have him be reborn in the midst of pariahs and he would be the most effective there um would would he be doing meditation as much um or would he just simply be serving you know maybe bringing food to people and doing things like this yeah, like true. you know but True. maybe he's a higher higher soul. <laughs> he's he's maybe been there, done that in the meditation part of many lives. <laughs> um, yeah, who knows? No each other. There, there's a great little quote. I just maybe want to end it uh, on this that Gandhi, when asked about the purpose of life, he said, "To die with the name of God on my lips," and that is a very pure, and, simplistic statement. And that he did because uh, when God say assassinated him, I believe mm. he said, "Ram." Hey Ram. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey Ram, he said. Hey Ram. No, yeah. hey, hey. Hey Ram. But... Hey Ram. Ram as in the god Ram. Like, and he'll, yeah, no. I, yeah. I, I know, yeah. So that was quite literal. Oh, yes. Yeah. In the Kingsley film, he said, um, oh God, I think. But that's not, that's a really bad uh, interpretation. translation. Yeah. yeah. Translation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Brits. Uh, <laughs> still meddling <laughs> <laughs> can't get out Jaguru, thank you for thanks uh, everyone for joining being us with us it was quite nice uh one-on-one -on -one, chris yeah and, uh, maybe we I should enjoy uh, it after a couple of weeks on maybe we should uh do more of this <laughs> <laughs> i hope mike isn't listening <laughs> at least it's not public this conversation <laughs> it's funny i started started this conversation with we're going to suspend Chris, but now we have to suspend Mike because we're having such a good one-on-one -on -one conversation. Don't, don't cross Priyank, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe you could form a coup and suspend me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we'll get a vote. We'll get the, the, the listeners. <laughs> the <vote. laughs> listeners don't do that. Our egos are not up to that level of no, scrutiny. No. <laughs> yeah, please don't. No. Okay. On that note, Jager, everyone. Bye, Jager. Jager.